Because of the way the universe is created, we each of us live in two worlds at the same time. We have to live in the outer life of our own bodies and the inner life of our own souls. Hello and welcome to Living the Inner Life. I'm your host, Chris Sheridan, and I want you to join with me on a journey into our inner lives, our thoughts, our feelings, beliefs, everything that we have in this interior experience of ours that helps determine how we incorporate and engage the outside world and live a better total life. Okay, now our lives are very busy and we have to wear many hats throughout the day, doing a lot of different things. Sometimes we have to do several things at once, or so it seems, and we call this multitasking. But I'm wondering if that's really even possible. Like, do we, can we actually really do multiple things at the same time? Because if there's only a certain amount of conscious energy, attention that we have, if we give it to one thing, well, that's doing one thing. But if we divide that two or three times, are we really doing three different things or are we doing three things kind of half-assed? All right, so maybe we're semi-tasking instead of multitasking. And I want to explore that further. And in some ways, like anything and everything else, it kind of depends on the way you look at it. But in this case, I think it really depends on what the task is. Okay, if you are trying to read, just like from a book or off a screen or something, and you are trying to read three different books at the same time, I'm not sure how possible that would be. You could read a book and have some ambient music in the background and maybe take that in uh, with your semi-conscious part of your brain while your focus is more on the words. And at the same time, you might be daydreaming or conjuring up mental images, uh, pictures of what the text of this book that you're reading is describing. So there's three things going on at once, but there are three really different things. They're utilizing three different, distinctly different, I think, parts of our consciousness are in our life. Okay, so the one is the reading. That's maybe a little more left brain. You have to look at the words on the page or on the screen. And you have to, however you read, if you sound out words when you read silently in your head, or if you scan or skim, speed read, things like that, you still have to track across the words and through the paragraphs and not go so fast that you're skipping over a bunch of stuff and missing out. And if you focus too much, you're going to get bogged down and maybe lose the rhythm of the story, which can happen. Uh, that's one level or state of awareness, of consciousness, that's devoted towards this reading that you're doing. Okay? Now, the ambient music in the background... And I'll use my preference. I usually like classical music or something just like atmospheric. <laughs> it might be the word. Something that doesn't have a lot of drums and rhythm and words and guitar solos, things like that. Music I would normally like to listen to if I were just listening to music for the sake of enjoyment uh, or playing music like that. Um, but... That way, for me, it doesn't compete with what I'm trying to do. I can have classical or ambient music in the background and do just about anything, and it just kind of adds a background noise. Some people are like that with television. They can have a television on all day long. Even if they're not watching it, it just sort of fades in the background. I personally uh, don't have that. For some reason, I get sucked in, even if it's something I don't like. It's on TV. I'm annoyed by it or distracted. Okay. So this reading process that we're getting back to, kind of left brain, your focus, your concentration is on the words. You have more of just a feeling sensation of this ambient music. It's just laying a background sound for you. And then the daydreaming or this mental imaging because it's connected with the words. If you are reading about a knight in shining armor and he's on his mighty steed and he's going through the black forest looking through whatever to find the green knight or whoever he's going to battle with, 
Um, well, that's descriptive, and you can conjure up a lot of different images with that, okay? And it's not really a different task. It's actually connected with the task of reading, because you're reading about this knight in shining armor and his mighty steed, and you are thinking about a picture at the same time, okay? So it's very connected. And this background music is not upsetting or distracting or too enticing that it's going to pull you away from it. So these may be three different states or levels of awareness or consciousness that's going on at the same time. Is that really multitasking? I'm not really sure. Okay, so let's take another example of driving, something a lot of us do something a lot of us do a lot, and we all know about distracted driving, okay? And usually that has something to do with your cell phone or even the hands-free talking device. Now, I'm not sure how true this is, but I have read some reports that say it doesn't matter if you're holding on to the phone and you're talking to somebody while you're driving or it's hands-free or you have a headset, that it's the same level of distraction, okay, whether you're holding the phone or you're speaking through a speaker to somebody while you're driving. And that may or may not be true. I can believe it if somebody went in and actually studied that correctly. But I will say, if you are trying to drive and you're trying to look at your phone, if you're trying to text, if you're trying to post, if you're trying to do anything, First of all, I don't recommend any of that. I don't recommend talking on the phone, hands-free or not, or certainly not doing any texting, okay? At least when I'm out there or anybody I know is out there driving, go off on a country road and maybe do it by yourself. I know a lot of people do. Some states, I think that's illegal. I don't have a problem with that because I think it's very, very distracting. Now, looking at a GPS map on your screen, on your dashboard, or even on your phone, if you're not too busy fiddling with it, in a way, isn't that much of a distraction because it is the route that you're on. It's very connected with the driving process, with what you're doing. Now, if you're really looking at the map and, oh, do I turn left or turn turn right or look for traffic or a place to eat or something like that, yeah, then your eyes are diverted off the road. But if it's directions being spoken out from your GPS, or if it's just an occasional glance, uh, as long as you can just do it uh, without getting too focused on the screen, and then back on the road, because ostensibly that's a little picture of the road that you're on as you're driving. So it's connected with it. It's related. It's thematically (laughs) the same, very similar. Whereas if you're talking to somebody on the phone, they could be somewhere else, uh, which is very different than talking to somebody who's sitting in the car. Okay, somebody else sitting in the car knows you're driving, and all you got to do is put a hand up and go, hang on, oh, let, let me get around this traffic. And they can stop, and you can they can read into the conversation. Okay, they can read the room at that point because they're in the car with you. But somebody else on the phone far away is not with you, and they may be doing their thing. They may be, you know, cleaning the countertops in their kitchen or whatever, or going for a walk. And they're in a whole different world than you are when you're in your car trying to talk to them. Okay, so again, uh, with the music, actually, I don't really have that much of a problem with any kind of music. All right. But if you're really focused on a song, and maybe you're singing along with it, or you're really focused on, gosh, you know, what are the lyrics there? Uh, Yeah, then you're listening to music. You're not really driving the car. You should be enjoying music as you're driving the car, okay? So that's just my position on driving. And I've I've broken my rules now and then. I rarely do anymore uh, because I think when you're driving, you're driving. And personally, it's something I like to do. I enjoy driving, okay? So by staying focused on where I am on the road, where the other cars are, who's behind me, what's ahead of me, what's around this truck. Uh, I find that very interesting, and that's just part of the driving process for me. So I don't need to be distracted or entertained 
by other things. So this semi-tasking, hmm, we are doing things partially, okay? If you do one thing, you can devote 100% of your concentration. If you do two things, not so much, okay? So depending on what it is we're doing, how is that affecting our total ability? At what point does one thing take away from the other? And if you're doing that, you may be actually reducing your efficiency instead of increasing it. Oh, I'm doing two or three things at once in an hour. Uh, well, that's great. You can get three things done in an hour instead of one. That is more productivity. That's more efficiency. But are you doing those three things well? Is one distracting from the other, which is taking energy and focus away from the third thing? Okay, so I think a lot of what happens, what we do, is we switch. Okay, we flip from one thing to the next thing. Okay, well, if you're driving and you need to, I don't know, fiddle with something with the air conditioner, you can divert a little bit of your attention to the air conditioner and then back on the road. Then I'm back here with the dash trying to get this thing to work and I glance over at the road. You can cycle from one to the next and not pull so much concentration out from the driving uh, that you're focused on something else. As a matter of fact, there's a cautionary tale, a very tragic one, that bears repeating. I guess we're talking about multitasking. And that was uh, an airliner accident, a horrible plane crash, killed everybody in the Everglades. And there were three pilots, three flight crew, pilot, co-pilot, and probably a flight engineer. And they were on a long descent into the airport in Florida. Everything's going normal, weather instruments, nothing out of the ordinary. And they were getting a warning light you know, on the instrument panel. And it, I think it had something to do with whether or not the landing gear doors were open or shut. And they were, you know, the pilot asked the co-pilot, hey, what about this? Can you take a look? Oh, gosh, I don't know. And they brought in the flight engineer. And pretty soon, all three of them were so focused on this warning signal and trying to determine whether or not this was a maybe a faulty light bulb that was giving an anomalous or incorrect warning signal or if it really was a problem or an issue that they needed to deal with. But what happened was all three of them got so fixated on this one little problem, they actually forgot that they were flying the plane and it crashed into the Everglades and all lives were lost. Okay, that's kind of an extreme example, but it's something to keep in mind when we're talking about multitasking. All right. So if we can rotate from one thing to another or devote some time towards one thing and then over here, a lot of times I think about cooking or something in the kitchen, okay? You may have something on the back burner, which is actually a metaphor we use for things that are not front and center that we can kind of just let go in the background, okay? But at any given time, you're really focused on one thing. Okay. Oh, the pot's boiling over. Okay. Well, I'll turn it down and maybe crack the lid a little bit so it doesn't uh, you know, go everywhere. Okay. And then I can get back to chopping the tomatoes with a knife. But if you're trying to chop with a knife and fiddle with the lid and look in the oven and you're probably going to get cut, I don't know, burned something. <laughs> There's a lot, of, a lot of inherent dangers in the kitchen if you aren't paying attention. And I think that's where a lot of this multitasking, um, I guess the downside of it, comes into play. And that's losing focus. That's losing presence. You're not presently aware of your current condition and what you're doing. Okay, because you got to think about this. You got to think about that. You're trying to do this. You're trying to do that. And one of those things is probably not going to be get it the, uh, getting the attention and focus that it deserves. And that's when accidents happen, things spill. Yes, you might slip and cut yourself with a knife or something like that. Hopefully nothing too serious. Uh, but this diverted attention, okay, can really be a troubled 
part of our lives. And where we're distracted and where our attention gets diverted, a lot of times, yes, it's in the device. We have this handheld device. I'm guilty of it. Is anybody else? If that's a crime, I don't know. I don't do it while I'm driving, but a lot of other times I, I am. And I know that even if I'm just casually scrolling through a Twitter feed or something like that on my phone, it takes just enough focus away. Just enough of my total attention is drawn in. It's small and you, you look at it uh, to where if somebody's trying to talk to me, I may actually not hear them. Okay. Or I may hear something and go, mm -hmm, yeah, okay, yeah, whatever. Uh, not really knowing what the other person said. And I've caught myself doing that. And I, you know, actually, I think that's kind of rude. So uh, my rule on that is, is look, if you want to talk to me, if you want to get my attention, if there's something important or even just trivial, you know, just want to have a conversation. If I'm looking at my phone or if my earbuds or headphones are on, get my attention first. You know, go, hey, tap me on the shoulder, wait till I'm done, say, hey, put that down for a second if you don't mind, or when you get a minute to take a break, uh, you know, I want to talk to you about something, I want to run something by you. Okay, that's sort of the arrangement that I have, and I try to communicate that, uh, but I just know my failings or my, well, I just know myself enough to know that I can't do anything like that when I'm driving, and if I'm even just sitting around casually looking at my phone, uh, I do know that for whatever reason that pulls enough of my focus away that I'm not present, okay? And if there's nothing else going on, if you're not watching the kids or grandkids or, you know, whatever it is you need to be doing or keeping an eye on or having a conversation with the person in the room with you, it can be a real distraction and a real conversation killer, all right? So know that about yourself and realize that maybe when you're multitasking, if you really think you are multitasking, maybe you're just semi-tasking and you're not really doing these multiple things, any of them very well, okay? So maybe better to break things up, even if you have to do it, again, rapidly. You've got 10 seconds here and then you got 10 seconds there. 30 seconds over there, and then back to where you started and work on that, okay? Because the real problem with this multitasking or having this multiple diversion, all these different points of focus, is that it can actually get worse, <laughs> okay? It's like the more distracted you get, the more distracted you become, okay? More makes more. So it can kind of get out of hand if you don't keep a curb on it. And of course, the best way at any time, whether you're single tasking, double tasking, or multitasking, or semi-tasking, to get back to the present moment, listen to your breath, <sighs> okay? There's only one place in time and space where you can hear your breath, and that's in the present moment. Okay, so your body's doing it, you can hear it, you can feel it, well, air's coming in your lungs and you're exhaling, and because this sound that your breath makes when you breathe happens now, only in the present moment, and if you can just pause, okay, I'm breathing, I can hear my breath, I'm in my body, I'm in the room, I'm in the world, I'm in the present moment which is something we should probably check in with every now and then, no matter what we're doing, no matter how many tasks we have. And we do. We have busy lives. And it does seem that we can do multiple things at once. But the more two or more things seem to have in common, okay? Like if you're trying to watch four different TV shows, or like I was saying earlier about trying to read you know, three different books, at the same time, or worse, if you're trying to drive and have a FaceTime conversation or check your Insta feed while you're driving, when those two things are either similar in that 
they don't have to be a similar thing, like looking at your phone and driving aren't really similar activities. But what I mean by that is that they take similar amounts of concentration and a similar style, okay? It, if you're looking at the road and I have to do this, I have to do that, you're taking in uh, the other cars, the condition of the road, maybe the weather, anything that's changing, um, the condition of your car, you're taking all this in, all this sensory input, and you're processing it, and you're responding to it, every bump, every turn, every time somebody cuts you off, you, you have to back off, you have to change lanes. There's so many different things to do, and you're constantly having this interchange with your car and your environment. Well, maybe looking at your phone is kind of the same thing. Well, I got to scroll down. Oh, I got to read this. What does this article say? Oh, okay. Oh, somebody texts me. Well, I got to use a steering wheel with your elbow and you're trying to use your fingers and oh, I spelled that wrong or I got to, you know, time four o'clock tomorrow. Okay. You know, it's the same kind of attention that you want to be giving to the road and the cars and the conditions that you're giving to your phone and your feed and your text. Okay. Then really you're kind of only doing one of those things at any given time. Okay. And it doesn't take that long while you're driving for things to maybe go wrong if you're not really paying attention <laughs> to what you're doing, or rather if your attention is similarly focused, if you're taking that same kind and same amount of focus energy and you're placing it somewhere else, you're not placing it on the road. Now, can we drive and think of other things and do other things? Of course, we can do that all the time. But again, I don't know if that's really multitasking, okay? Because uh, I've used this before, I'll use it again. There's a muscle memory that comes with driving, at least as far as knowing where we're going. If we've traveled a route to work, or to rehearsal, or wherever it is you go, grocery store or something, quite often, if you take the same route, you go the same road, same direction, same everything, and you don't need the GPS, you've already internalized it, okay? That is muscle memory, and that is part of your focus, that is part of your inner life, is this muscle memory. So you can daydream, okay? Your mind could be somewhere else. As long as enough of your mind and your seeing, uh, your sensory uh, capacities are focused on the road, even if you're not really 100, like the you that's in charge or thinks it's in charge, is really focusing on, okay, I'm here, I have to get up at this exit, or I have to turn right. No, you've done it 100 times. Your body actually remembers how to do that. And as long as your focus isn't too distracted, you could be daydreaming, you could be talking with somebody in the car, and you're still going to take the right exit and find your way home because you're using a different part. So if you're going to do multiple things at the same time, make sure they're different kinds of focus. And if one thing is important, like driving or having a conversation, being present, with somebody else in the room, make sure you're not doing something that's taking your presence away, okay? Because you can't really multitask. You're semi-tasking, which means you're doing things half-assed, all right? So pick your fights, and if it can be a background type of a ambient music that's going on while you're really focusing on something else, great. If you're jamming out to the tunes and singing along and having a great time, you're not going to really focus on your spreadsheet or whatever it's in front of you on the computer as well as you would otherwise. Okay, so that's just a look at multitasking. I know we're busy. We have many things to do. And the way life is and technology, it seems as though we can do multiple things but really, I think we just cycle from one to the next and then back again. Or we're doing something in the background where one is actually taking priority. All right. So pick your fights, wear many different hats, but try to only really focus on one at the same time. 
and you can still get as much done, maybe even more than if you're trying to do a whole bunch of stuff at once. Okay. Kind of like carrying a bunch of boxes. If you try to just get everything into your arms and stack them all up and make one trip, well, you might not see where you're going. You might drop a couple. It could be very frustrating. You might be better off grabbing part of the load of boxes and making three trips. It might actually be more efficient and safer as far as your goods or whatever's in the boxes that you're carrying. Okay. So we have multiple things to do. And I hope anyway, that while you're listening to this podcast, you're out raking leaves or cleaning your house or doing whatever it is you do. And you're just listening to me in the background because it doesn't need that much focus or attention and you can be doing something else. All right. So happy to be on board while you're multitasking. If you're driving, focus. All right. <laughs> Thanks. We'll see you next time here on Living the Inner Life.